You know, actual game development is incredibly focused chaos. It can be crazy at times, it can be boring, you can want to cry at times. I couldn't see myself doing anything else, because it's what I love. I don't think I actually remember a time that existed before I made games. I think I've always been interested in some way from a very early age. I had an IT, a particular IT teacher who was so frustrated by the fact that I spent all of my IT lessons making Flash games that he, he actually recommended that I never pursue any kind of career in IT because he was convinced that I was useless at it. The moment at which I decided that I really needed to be business partners with Duncan. It's four in the morning, the game doesn't work properly, it, we've got four hours until we've got to show it off to the judging panel and, and Duncan arrives with cooked chicken sandwiches. I'm I'm just like holy holy crap! This guy is like I need this guy. I think kind of his crowning moment was we were, we were doing something for an event and we really needed an electrician, and he went away and like read six huge books on being an electrician and came back the next day. And said, it's all right, guys. I'm now an electrician. <laughs> for Gateway, I was at university for four years. That's where I met Lewis. People usually come to me and say we need this to work just to fix it and I go alright fine, <laughs> go and fix it. We all live in a big flat together and it actually just caught fire so I just wake up one morning to Duncan just casually in his pyjamas putting out a big fire in the corner of the room just as if it's a, a usual part of his day, stabbing out this fire. The awesome thing about this is I actually found everybody that I work with on the internet. Um, so Brecht I found on a forum. I knew Lewis from back in the modding days so I used to work on a mod with him, uh, Stargate Last Stand. Over the course of probably five years, he kept bugging me like, when are you coming to the UK? Let's do something together again. Um, get over here. And eventually I cracked. You know, there's was, there was quite a lot of bromance involved in getting Brecht to actually come over to England to be with us. Spectra is a procedural racing game where you race uh, against the music uh, and avoid obstacles. Spectra started off as a game jam game, so we were working on another project um, before then for about six months and we got to a certain stage in the project where we were really tired. So we decided as a group we would have two weeks off and we did kind of the craziest thing imaginable. Is we booked out a stand at an expo and we, we said that the game we were taking was title not announced and we would take whatever game we had at the end of those two weeks to this expo and demo it there. What happened was we took it to the expo and we had people lining up around the corner to play it. And that was the point where we were thinking, maybe we're actually onto something here and we should actually consider making this a real game. And that was five months ago. <laughs> the core of Spectre is absolutely the music. So everything that you do in the game is based on something that happens in the music. So the game listens to the music and then what it interprets from that is used to generate the levels, it's used to generate how fast you're going, it's used to affect what colour the screen is and you know what obstacles are on the track. Everything that you do is based upon what's happening in the music. Who is Chipsel? Got to confess I've never met Chipsel. Lewis is the one to answer that question. What? <laughs> So back last year I went to Game Developers Conference in 2013 and at that meetup was the girl who goes by the name of Chipsell and she's a producer of Chiptune Music. I kind of noticed that there was a bit of a lack of like indie development within the UK. It was interesting when Lewis, Lewis was saying that uh, he had his like team of three people and I was just like, we should do something. <laughs> He was saying, um, oh, we'd love to, you know, base a game around Spectre for Insomnia. Like, and I was like, oh, that's really cool, yeah. He was like, you make it within like a week and then you showcase it and then, you know, if get it, get it, we can kind of judge by the response, you know, what, where we can kind of go from there. And I was like, yeah, sure, awesome. I really got hooked on the music and I 
just out of the blue pinged an email saying look I'd really love to make a game about this music it is by its nature game music it's made with game boards but there's no game for it to go with can we can we solve that and then like I had people tweeting me about it being like oh my god what is this game and I was just like this is good this is a good sign let's go with this The way that we made Spectra look and feel was we wanted to take all those things that we loved about the arcade generation. So we wanted to have like the like the retro feel. The really simple graphics, the, you know, line base, bright colours. And we wanted to kind of spin it and give it a slightly next gen sheen. So everything in Spectra looks like it's made of glass. We're using all the HDR rendering that's used in modern games. We push the console to a certain element to make sure the lines are really crisp. And the fact that we've got such a simple game actually gives us a lot of bandwidth to do some quite creative stuff with the power of the Xbox. We find actually having that power available allows us to you know, really make the game look how we consider that the next-gen arcade game should look. Pretty much all, all of it is a homage to, to old retro games. Your points are expanded by collecting little floating voxels, someone would say they're equivalent to collecting coins if you're a plumber or uh, rings if you're a hedgehog. I think the problem that you have these days is visibility. It's very rare that you can come up with an idea that truly differentiates anymore because everybody's having good ideas. How do you make a game that you really care about and then make it visible in front of people and get other people to care about it. And so for us that was a real struggle. Lots of sleepless nights um, wondering how we were going to get the game into people's, into people's viewpoints. It can be very difficult, it can be uh, a long process and it can never actually get there. You can try Kickstarter and nobody, nobody hears about it and it just fizzles out after a couple of months. Um, you go through hell together to build these games. They're not, it's not a pleasant experience, it's not something that you can do half fast. You're either all in or you, you just give up. That was like that was the general consensus. No. It was like there's no already like there's no there's no red there. I dropped this my fault. It's always, why is it always my fault? <laughs> One of the key things we were influenced by when making, you know, decisions about whether or not Spectra was gonna be a full game was we ended up on a Microsoft Ventures accelerator in the UK. Joining the Microsoft Ventures Accelerator was uh, a real kick in the face. Uh, it was brilliant, but from day one, you were being assaulted from all sides. Within that program, we uh, got access to industry experts and mentors who've been in the industry, the games industry, for uh, decades now. They were able to really answer a lot of our questions about how do we make this game so that when we launch it, we can get it into people's viewpoints so they can find out how great it is and play it and download it. It was a really, really good experience. Uh, and I think all the other um, studios who were at Microsoft Ventures can, can agree with that, that everybody gained a lot out of it. Without that help, uh, we'd still be in baby steps, I think. One of the first things that they did was they sat us down in front of Sav and they, they said, here's Sav, he made Banjo-Kazooie. Sav has a huge history in the games industry, coming out of Rare. You know, you've been a veteran in the industry for 10 years, what do you think? The UI wasn't good enough. He picked up the phone and said, I don't know what to do, and put it down again. Immediately, we three knew that we had a game that we knew how to work perfectly, but someone who'd never seen it, who hadn't spent three months making it, would pick it up and go, I don't know what to do, and put it down. So that was a big, a big problem. It's exactly what we needed. We only had a short amount of time with him. So if he wasn't blunt, he was wasting time. I'm Salvatore Felice, uh, better known as Sav, and I'm the production director at Lyft London. When I first saw Spectra, perhaps a bit more harsh than I needed to be. It probably wasn't quite as complicated as that. I probably could have played it and, and got my way through it, no problem. But instantly it was like, yeah, there's a bit much. It's a bit confusing. 90% of your users are going to have the same reaction, so you got to get that first interaction just right if you want the user to go past that. It proved the point and the guys addressed that and I think it, the way you start the game now is perfect. I'm excited to see how different people play it on different platforms. Uh, how the people who play it on the phone with the accelerometers will differ from people who play it on the Xbox with controllers. It's going to be exciting to see which one of them will play it the best, which section of the market is going to get the highest scores. 
think it's going to be the Xbox, but you never know. Everybody who plays games supports this fantastic ecosystem. They support this art form. It belongs to them. It doesn't belong to people like me. It belongs to the players. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the great thing about being on the Xbox is we can actually then, you know, having talked about we owe the community, we can get access to the Xbox community, who is one of the very like vocal, passionate, crazy groups of people uh, you know you can find on the internet. I actually can't wait to hear what people say, good or bad. I feel like I'm at the end of a long sigh. I've been holding my breath for three, four months making the game with the guys and now we've got to the end and it's launched, we can all go, ah. Now we can watch it in the hands of people who really want to play it. I never expected to see like a game that I was involved in on Xbox or you know whatever kind of platform whenever it goes up on the Xbox Marketplace. I'm just going to be giggling. He promised me he was going to take uh, four days off with his team. So theoretically, just now, he should actually be having a break. So Lewis, take a break, come back rested. They are the hardest working development team in the world, which is a compliment, but sometimes you have to learn your own limitations as well. Yeah, I always wanted Spectre to have like kittens, like kitten rockets, so you could like fire kittens and like meow, 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 like rainbows. Like blowing up the blocks and the tracks of thunder. There are people who have completed it, who have unlocked all of the tracks and 100%ed some of the lower tracks, but I'm not aware of anyone who's 100%ed the last track. I don't know anyone who's, who's that good. Dale, though. Dale. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>